All right, everybody, welcome to the show. Apologies for for the slight delay this morning. Good morning, and I wanted to take you guys back to 2017. Uh-oh, are we having a problem with the connection here? Are we live? Let's make sure, because I just saw something very weird happen on my screen. All right, I guess we're live. Having some, some issues, it looks like, with the... Uh, with the live stream. Let's let this play out a little bit before we keep going with the show. Okay, it looks like we're good now. Okay, weird. You guys saw that, right? So I wanted to take you back to 2017 with these videos that we did on the Great American Pair of Eclipses. Now, one already occurred on August 21st, 2017, and the other has yet to occur that's going to happen on April 8th, 2024. Now, after we watch these videos, we're going to calculate the exact halfway date between those two eclipses that I just mentioned. And it reveals an amazing discovery. The middle eclipse falls exactly on the date of another eclipse that's going to happen this year. So, in fact, we are halfway there. Now watch this first one we did in 2017. I'll put a link to these in the description or in the pinned comment uh, after the show so you guys can see this video. It's six minutes long. Enter the stars and something fascinating has just been revealed. Let's follow the path of pregnancy through the wilderness with the Israelites, except it's all in reverse. From birth, going backwards to conception, the pregnancy that would last 40 years in their journey and 40 weeks in the human womb. Let's start with the last of the ten plagues, the Passover of the firstborn. Remember, God spared only those whose posts were marked by the blood of the Lamb. The post and lentil represents the entry into the beast system. And here now you clearly see the post and lentil is encoded in the United States Post Office logo hiding in plain sight all this time. Everybody is postmarked in the beast system. You're identified by your address, the headdress of the Sphinx of Egypt. That is how they keep you in control. But the good version of that is being marked by the blood of the Lamb. And this is how you are passed over into Christ's fold. Only through Christ's blood are you spared. Birth, firstborn. Now, going in reverse, the narrow gate, the birth canal opens through the Red Sea. Of course, this is when the Red Sea was parted and the exodus happened, the birth. Remember, we're going in reverse. Blood and water, the Red Sea, dilation of the cervix. Before that, the water broke, the Red Sea split. And we see clearly that the Nile Delta is shaped like the woman's birth canal, exactly where it should be. We are all born into bondage, born into Egypt. Going back even further, we see the desert of sin. Right here between Elam and Sinai. This is where the Israelites ate the manna. This is just like what a child would receive in the umbilical cord. Manna, not real food, simply nutrients. This is the fasting in the womb. And then, at the halfway point of pregnancy, the 20th week, we see the tip of Sinai, where the Ten Commandments were written 
by the finger of God. But they weren't written just once, they were written twice. That's twenty altogether, the halfway point of pregnancy, the twentieth week, twenty commandments. Going back further at Gilbroth, we see the quail here. I think that's the fluttering of the child in the womb before the halfway point of pregnancy as you feel the child moving inside of you. And as we continue to travel back in time, we see the serpent who infected the woman. Yes, the copper serpent. This is it right here on the pole. God made Moses erect this as punishment for the Israelites murmurings and longing to be back in Egypt, back in bondage. And that brings us back to the beginning, the birth of sin in the world, the conception of the beast. And yes, even the yeast fits in to all of this, the yeast that causes the bread to rise. Unleavened bread was the requirement of the Passover because it removes the yeast which is present in the birth canal of women. It's called a yeast infection. And even that was part of this whole birthing process. It's all there. And now you know why yeast is taken out of the bread because that is the sin that entered the world. But there's one more thing nobody else saw in the history of the Bible in the spiritual realm. And that is that when you look at the pregnant stomach of the woman in the Sinai Peninsula, this is the womb you see the child inverted ready for birth exactly where it should be here you see the head of the child the arm coming out the eye the face the child curled around here in the womb ready for birth through the birth canal through the Red Sea, the parting of the Red Sea, exactly where it should be. And here in Egypt, you see the serpent or the beast crouching at the door of the womb, exactly where it should be too. And the Gulf of Suez and the Gulf of Agapa look like the two legs of the woman outstretched, ready to give birth. 40 years in the desert, 40 weeks in the womb. Take care and be safe, everybody. So I wanted to open the show with that video because that video really illustrates how there are metaphors in the stories, in the real events that happen in the Bible. God was basically trying to communicate something to us in the future. In the last days when knowledge increases, all of these things will be revealed. And this is why it was so important for the ancient biblical patriarchs to follow God's instructions because they were playing out something that would help us in the end times to understand how all of this fits together. So hopefully that video illustrated well the landscape and how important the landscape is and the signs on land and in heaven, which God says there would be. Now let's get into these eclipses because... This is fascinating. Again, this was a 2017 video that we did. Let's take a look at this one. This one's about eight minutes long. This is the Great American Eclipses that cross in Macanda, Illinois. Enter the stars. And here we have it. Egypt is... America. Now we're going to start with the obvious first. We're going to start with the slam dunks. And there's no room for stretching. It is what it is. This is the Nile Delta of Egypt. 
and its ancient cities. Some of these names you'll recognize. Giza, Cairo, Alexandria. And as you look at this overlay, as I slowly bring it to life, you'll notice the Mississippi River becomes the Nile River. Now we're going to start, like I said, with the slam dunks, Cairo, Illinois, Memphis, Tennessee, Cairo, Egypt, Memphis, Egypt. There you see they are exactly where they should be on the map. And the other ones that I found was Tannis Crescent Street right next to Tannis, Egypt. That was in Toronto. We also have Buto Lake in Michigan, right where Buto is in Egypt. We also have Alexandria, Minnesota, very close to Alexandria where St. Mark, the apostle, brought Christianity to Egypt. Now those are the obvious. Now let's look at the not so obvious. And this is what takes critical thinking because we also have other overlays. As you begin to look at this, you see Mississippi becomes Maidum, Louisiana becomes Lehun. May, Miss, Le, Luz, and Heracopolis becomes Houston. Now, when we look in Texas, we see Dallas. And we see a little place in Dallas called Little Egypt, Texas. And I did some research on Little Egypt, Texas. And this is what I found. You see, the big joke is that none of us were ever free we were just sold into a different kind of bondage the dollar yes the dollar we've never been free in this country taxes have always plagued us and forcing us to live in grids taking away farmers rights to be self-sufficient and trade with one another without the beasts having their dirty grubby little hands in the middle of it this is Little Egypt, Texas, an African-American community in Texas founded after the Civil War. It was located within the Dallas city limits north of Northwest Highway. Now I've mapped this out in Google Earth. It was 35 acres in size. And basically this town, they admit, was all about giving the freed slaves another place to go to. And they talk about the biblical story of the exodus of the Jews who were freed slaves from Egypt. So if they were freed slaves from Egypt, why would they put them in a town called Little Egypt? You see. Since then, all the residents have basically sold out and went into other areas. There was no water supply in Little Egypt. They did build a church. And this is Little Egypt, Texas. 35 acres right at the edge of Dallas, the north edge. Little Egypt, Texas. So I dropped this overlay of what Little Egypt used to look like. And here it is here. Some dirt roads, no plumbing. This is where the slaves lived we thought that they were free only to enter into another financial system that would enslave them all now here is what else we know this town here Marcanda is where the eclipses of 2017 and 2024 will cross Marcanda was called the star of Egypt now, we know that this area in southern Illinois is also called 
little Egypt. Now I'm going to pause there because we just discovered that Makita was the name of the Queen of Sheba. And that sounds a lot like Makanda. We saw crossing eclipses there in Yemen that seemed to mark the birth of Christ. We'll get into that later in the show. But I wanted to show you these videos because this basically shows you guys what we were already looking at with regards to these eclipses. Now what you're going to notice too is that the Nile Delta flows in the opposite direction as the Mississippi River Valley. But yet the two are overlaid in one another. So what you have is an as above, so below, halfway around the world. Let's keep listening here. Fitting right in to this whole storyline. We also see over here, the Red Sea, which seems to follow the coastline of the East Coast. You can't make this up. This is what's going on here, you guys. And it's simply unbelievable. Yes, the Red Sea is following the coastline of the East Coast. So now when I tell you that the World Trade Center is laid out like the pyramids at Giza, you know what I'm talking about. Now it begins to mix you. Look at World Trade Center. And we see that these three buildings, the World Trade Center Twin Towers and the new Freedom Tower, are laid out like the belt of Orion and the pyramids at Giza. And we also begin to understand now why the World Trade Center footprint has always been since its construction in 1973 has always been aligned to 119 degrees. Now I'm going to pause there because this is probably the most important point of the video. And that is when you go into Google Earth and you measure the footprint of this site, the foundation of the original buildings, they align to exactly 119 degrees. And when you spell that number backwards, you get the date that they would fall down. How could that have been? Well, because they all knew the plan from the beginning. Which is 9-11 backwards. They always knew this day was coming. And the final nail in the coffin. Where are the pyramids, Casey? On the map. Where are the pyramids on the map? They are almost exactly where they should be at Monk's Mound. In close proximity to Giza. As you can see here. And in fact, Monk's Mound is roughly the same size at its, at its base as the Great Pyramid of Giza. And there you go. You can't make this up. You can't stretch this. It is what it is. And this is the truth. But now the question becomes, what were many of these things built? Who were they built by? They were built by the Native Americans. Did you know that the Cherokee Indians were known as giant hunters in their oral tradition? And now we see that there possibly could be a concrete link between the Native Americans and one of the Hebrew tribes that came out of the Exodus because they recreated much of this ancient Egyptian landscape within their own new landscape in the new world. Take care and be safe, you guys. So we got one more video that I wanted to show you before we get into this December 14th eclipse. This is it here. Let me fast forward through some of this. I 
believe this is 2017 again. And there's what we just discovered. Um, repeating. Now some of this is, I think, muted out for some reason. Why isn't the sound coming up on this? Knights of the Golden Circle. Secret Society of the mid-19th century United States original objective was to annex a golden circle of territories in Mexico, Central America, and the Confederate States of America, and the Caribbean as slave states to be led by Maximilian I of Mexico. And here you actually see the crossing eclipses. Yeah, they just straight up stole the sound from this video. Interesting. So, these are the this is the eclipse that is coming up in April eighth, twenty twenty four, visible across North America. It goes up through Maine and down through Texas, and it crosses the other eclipse of August twenty first, twenty seventeen, in the place of Macanda, which we just discovered was the Star of Egypt. That's what Makanda is and what it means. Interesting. So, let's see if there's any sound in here. Here's the Makanda, Illinois. Star of Egypt, it's called. Their slogan. Here's the history of Makanda. Community of Makanda began with the building of the boarding house, construction camp of Illinois Center, railroad, there's actually some slave history here as well, which is true from much of the South, but it was incorporated in 1888. There's that number again, right? The name was changed to Marcanda. Historians are not certain. Marcanda. Which Mark the Evangelist was the one who set up the Church of Alexandria. So the original name of Makanda was Markanda, and maybe that's why. He was the Egyptian disciple, the one that set up the church there. Now we all know about the church, or the uh, library, the Alexandria Library that burnt, probably because they had some things that were they wanted to keep hidden, right? What is this? What happened to the sound on this? crazy so as this name began to evolve over the centuries over the hundreds of years we see the evolution of the history of this area in little egypt in southern illinois now you can't make this up this was part of the history of our country and when i opened this video i talked about god telling pharaoh to let my people go well Southern Illinois was in the crosshairs of the entire slavery issue in the South. And there were debates between Lincoln and Douglas about slavery. And they talked about letting the people go. Yes, there is nothing new under the sun. Shall the manufacturing, agricultural, and commercial interests of Northern Illinois be put into Egyptian bondage? So, yeah, I wonder why, what the sound came out on this. Weird, right? So there was an issue back then, right at Mercanda, right where the crossing was in Southern Illinois, about letting the slaves go. And so this was in debate, and this definitely is a metaphor for the Pharaoh not letting the Hebrew slaves go which of course the rest is history with the exodus of the Egyptians under the guide under Moses here's the origin of the little Egypt name southern Illinois poor harvest of the northern state drove people to southern Illinois to buy grain remember all the stories about grain and the storehouses in, in Egypt well it seems to be repeating here there's nothing new under the sun Wow, and it says others say it was because the land of Great Mississippi valleys were like that of Egypt's. 
Other settlements in the area were, all th were also given names with Egyptian or Greek Middle Eastern origins. So, there is definitely a connection between this area, which forms basically the neck of the Nile Valley. Pretty crazy stuff. Although Illinois was a free state prior to the American Civil War, some residents of Little Egypt still owned slaves. Illinois law generally forbid, forbade bringing slaves into Illinois, but a special exemption was given to the salt works near Equality, it was called, of all things. Here's Cairo, Illinois. Apparently there were some lynchings going on. On November 11th, 1909, two men were lynched. Up through this. And I think I picked that up because November is the ninth month. So it was kind of a blind 11 type event. Southern Illinois had become the center of the Knights of the Golden Circle, a secret group devoted to supporting the Confederacy. See, all this is coming full circle. This is where these eclipses cross. And look what is front and center. Front and center right now. In terms of national news, it's all of this, right? This history, this exact history, and this is where these eclipses cross. So I go into some history of the trip. Their objective was to annex a golden circle of territories in Mexico, Central America, Confederate States of America, and the Caribbean as slave states. So now you understand the history of Marcanda, the center the center of these two eclipses crossing, the star of Egypt. And now you understand why all of this racial hatred is now at, on center stage in America. Wow, and I said that back in 2017, and look where we are now. Unbelievable. And as God said, there is nothing new under the sun. Markanda, Cairo, Illinois, hiding in plain sight. And when you use your critical thinking, you begin to understand the truth about the world we live in. And here it is right now, Southern Illinois, Egypt. And now after I said all of that, you can understand why every fall, vultures fly over Makanda and the surrounding areas and signal the beginning of fall and the arrival of the colors in Southern Illinois. And you understand that the postmaster, which is has your address or the headdress which is what the Sphinx is called, which has the word address in it. And you know why the doors of the Israelites had to be, have their posts marked. They had to be postmarked so that they could, the Lord would pass over their houses and their firstborn would not be killed. Now you understand why Laura is talking about the vultures. Lore the postmaster and saying it's kind of creepy to come out of the post office in the afternoon to a tree full of vultures. You see, and now you understand why in 1863 Minerva had a parcel of land surveyed and subdivided, which then became the town of Macanda. And you understand that Minerva is in fact. The Greek Athena, who was based on the earlier Egyptian goddesses, Isis and Neith. All of this is connected and it's real. And let this be a testament to the Holy Spirit. This is not something I discovered. This is something that God dropped in my lap. And now you see the truth that what I've been saying all along, that 
America is Egypt. The World Trade Center laid out like the Belt of Orion, like the Three Pyramids, the Twin Towers forming two of the pyramids and the new World Trade Freedom Tower forming the third pyramid. And now we see the truth that the Nile Delta, as you see here, superimposed on the Ohio and Mississippi rivers shows us the Nile Delta. So obviously the rest is history. This discovery went viral. A lot of channels picked this up. But very few people realized that, that we had kind of broke this. Now there have been other people that have said Egypt is America and have drawn some similarities between some of the cities and towns in Little Egypt but no one had done the overlay map and showed the almost exact replica of these cities and almost their exact location. And again, I can't take credit for that. That was a gift of the Holy Spirit because he wants you to know that you are in bondage. And look at where we are now. We've all been put in bondage, literally. House arrest, quarantine, forced marks. You see where all this is headed. So let's calculate the halfway date between the two eclipses that we just talked about. And here's the first one. This is August 21st, 2017. Here is the, the other one. April 8th, 2024. They cross in Macanda, Illinois, as we just discussed at length. And when you calculate the, the duration between those two dates, you get Let's make this a little bit bigger. 2,422 days. So, of course, simple math. Halfway point would be 1,211 days, right? So, that brings us from the first eclipse, adding 1,211 days to December 14th, 2020. And lo and behold, on that exact date, another eclipse emerges. The December 14th solar eclipse. A total one at that. So it is a special eclipse. That's coming up. And I want you to take a look at all the eclipses that happened during this year. Okay, these are lunar eclipses here, of course. But you're again seeing this pattern of smile now, cry later, right? This image of the eclipse across the earth that looks like a smiley face or a happy face. And, and in this particular year, we have a sad face. That was the summer solstice, June 21st. And we have the happy face, December 14th. I believe this may be the date that they launch this VC across the world. Trump kept saying Christmas. This would be as good a time as any, right? Get in the Christmas spirit. Go get your jab on. I won't be doing it. But I want you to notice that these eclipses form pairs. A smile now, cry later. We had a smile eclipse that happened on December 26th, the previous year, during Christmas in 2019. And that one was the smile. This is the cry later, the June 21st, because basically chaos ensued. But remember, in the beginning, when this whole CV kicked off, they were trying to get us to look at all the positives. And this was a good thing because we were all going to be together with our families, right? And we we're all going to get free checks in the mail and just take a vacation, right? Now, here is the December 14th eclipse. And this is very important because this falls on the eight-year anniversary after Handy Suck. I'm saying that a different way on purpose because it is a very sensitive topic. Now, myself and others believe that these crossing eclipses bring events of biblical proportions to the regions where they cross. Here is a site is someone, one of you guys, a subscriber, sent this to me. And this site talks about these crossing eclipses. 
It's like an X. And that is the Hebrew letter Tav or Tau, T A U. That is the symbol. And they talk about this at length and they see the patterns. It's like an X or a mark. Now, a pair of these crossing eclipses actually occurred at the birth of Jesus. As you can see here, right here in Yemen, where Makeda, the Queen of Sheba, reigned over a dam. The dam broke several times, but these are the eclipses that Jesus witnessed during his life. They start in 6 BC, and the, I think the last one is in 24 AD. And as you can see, there were exactly four that he would have seen for total eclipses. And as you can see, one seems to represent the cross, the crucifixion. One seems to represent the ascension after the crucifixion. And the other seems to re represent breaking through the firmament, the narrow gate, back to heaven. Fascinating stuff. Now, this gives a whole new meaning to hot cross buns after everything we just showed you. Now, these are eaten during Lent in parts of the world. And the spices in this, these cross buns, they're not, they're not, they're like Tav symbols. They're, they're more like a Tav symbol than they are a crucifixion cross, which of course we know looks uneven. But this Tav is what seems to be on the top of these buns. And it says right here, the cross representing the crucifixion of Jesus and the spices inside, signifying the spices used to embalm him at his burial. Now, the Arabic symbol for the Tav is called a Teh, T-E-H, and it is a smiley face. The letter is actually a verb that means died. And I believe that the letter was fashioned after the shape that the eclipses form when they cross in the map. We just talked about smile now. Cry, look at this. This is crazy. That's a smiley face. This one, same one in a different form, is a sad face. See, it says Arabic letter te. Look at this one. This one, they even put a nose on it. So these are different variations and forms of the Arabic letter, te, as you can see here. And we're going to get into that more in tomorrow's show. That's what tomorrow's show is going to be about. We're going to break down this Arabic letter because it actually appears as the third letter and 22nd letter in two separate Arabic alphabets, 322 skull and crossbones are you guys starting to see what's going on here there's much deeper meanings this could explain this association that the US has always had with Saudi Arabia it could explain it why they're always friends regardless of their human rights records Regardless of red or blue president, they always are friends with the Saudis. And that brings us to our last video that I wanted to show you. And this will tie it all in together before we end the show. Well, this was 2018, which to me, this seals the deal. Let's take a look. This eclipse, it goes through Maine. Um, and so I decided to map out all of the eclipses of the 21st century and found that they actually form a pentagram. When you flip the United States upside down, it forms an upside down pentagram. 
And now you begin to understand what is going on. Now, what encloses this pentagram is the highest rates of murder and suicides going right along the south of America. Now, there's a recent scandal that just broke about basically smuggling of children through the sales of art. And this. So I wanted to show you that because basically what you're looking at here. These are the two crossing eclipses in McCanda, Illinois, as you can see here. I highlighted them in red. These are all the eclipses of the 21st century, so since the year 2000 to now and, and beyond. And they form what appears to be devil horns across the top and what appears to be, to me, this looks like a pentagram how all these eclipses cross and now and like I told you in that video within that area is the highest rates of murder and suicide with inside this this star that's formed here by all these eclipses crossing each other so dark days ahead for those that are non-believers in America but for those that are believers we know that the end is near. We welcome it as long as you keep the faith. That's what I wanted to show you guys today. We'll be back on here bright and early tomorrow. I'll link everything that I can in the pinned comment. I think we have time to answer a few questions. Thanks to everybody that showed up. Let's let this catch up. So again, tomorrow we'll be talking about the Tav, the Tau, and the Teh, the Arabic letter that looks like the smiley face. Now, I had uh, I had a couple of people of, of the Islamic faith get upset at me, but I, I'm going to show you guys proof. This is what it is. Uh, you can't make this up. And it all dovetails in with the cross, the mark. I believe that the Tav letter, the crossing sticks is the mark now i've talked to mark about this it's interesting mark was the one that first opened my eyes to the mark right and his name is mark which is kind of interesting but that's how god works he's got a sense of humor right so mark got into looking at these hebrew letters on a much deeper level and if you ever have um the desire to do that go to mark's channel it's called yahuwah's word is king i've got him linked on the front of my youtube channel so you can go on there and you could see that you see his channel you his word is king and he has broken down every single one of these hebrew letters including the tav and he looks at the progression of the letter and how it's changed over the millennia from generation to generation and i believe that they've changed and adjusted in these letters to hide the true deeper meanings of what these letters mean so he goes all the way back in time to the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. And that is where you begin to see what these symbols really meant. So he's gone through probably 20 of these Hebrew letters so far. And the Tav is fascinating. And it basically was a... They would use this to mark the furrows in a field. This is the original... Um, the original purpose of this Tav symbol, which is the X, it looks like an X. And they would stick these two sticks at the all the way across the field. And as the farmers were having the bulls pull the furrow down the field, they were going towards the mark. Now, why is this important? Because the mark, you could either be marked with the blood of the lamb or you're marked with the beast. This carries so much connotation, it's not even funny. Like, remember, Cain was the one that tilled the fields. So Cain had the mark. God marked him. So imagine Cain with his bull pulling, tilling his fields, right? And, and going toward the mark at the end of the field to make sure his, sure his rows were straight. This is crazy. I mean... This is so deep, it's not even funny. And so, now imagine God came up with an answer to that mark because obviously the bloodline of humanity was tainted. 
And so God had to have a different mark, the mark of the blood of the lamb, which ended up becoming Jesus, which was a safety net, a savior, a way out of being marked by the beast. So all this is coming full circle because another mark is coming. And that is the mark of the VC, which is what they're going to try to basically put on us. We're not going to be able to buy and sell, go into stores, do anything, travel without this mark. You see how all this fits together now? And why there was a crossing eclipse mark at the birth of Christ? Because he would be hung on a cross to neutralize or do away with the mark of the beast. And when he carried his cross up the hill of Golgotha, it looked like an X, just like the Tav. And the very first gifts that he received as a child were the same spices the Egyptians used to embalm the dead. So he was born into death, born into sin, but then he released us from the curse. He carried that cross up the hill, shaped like an X because it's at an angle as he's carrying it, right? He stood it up. He unfolded the cube into the cross, was nailed to it, released us from the curse through belief in him. I don't know how much more proof people need that he is the son of man. It's simply fascinating. Let's go into the chat very quickly. All right. Um. Yes, it gets deeper and deeper. Absolutely. Fill my head. My head's full of this stuff. How do you know the cross look like an X? Because when you're carrying a cross up a hill, the way Christ carried it with his shoulder in the corner of the cross, it's an X. You got to think symbolically with all this stuff. And that is the Tav. It's the mark. He put it upright. You really, on this channel, you really got to think outside the box because... All of these things come to life, all of the symbolism, and it's fascinating, it's amazing, but it's been hidden from you because our Christian experience, we've seen through the lens of controlled Christianity, big box Christianity. They don't want you thinking like this. They want to control. This is why the same old stories are told over and over again with no new information, because it's control. God said in the last days, knowledge would increase. All these things will be revealed to people who want to see it. To people that try, who actually care. It's not being revealed to the church, the big box church, because they're under the beast already. They're already being controlled by the government. Why would God reveal these secrets to them when They've got 501c3, and now Trump just opened it up so he can pour campaign money into churches now. They just brought the money right back in the temple. God's not going to reveal things to them. It doesn't mean all the people that are there are bad, and the people that go to church are bad at and not anything, nothing can be further from the truth. They're trying, it's just they've been deceived. So, what else do we have here? Good question. All right. Come out of her, my people. Babylon the Great. That is what we're dealing with here. So, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. We'll be back on here bright and early tomorrow. Break this down some more. I love each and every one of you. Take care and be safe, you guys.